I did something that I've never done before. I actually, I've been working on this self-portrait. And it's weird to paint yourself, you know? It's like, and then, am I gonna paint myself with glasses or without glasses? Uh, what should my hair look like? What era? I picked a picture from like four or five years ago. That painting of me is a different person. I'm a completely different person than I was um, less than a year ago. I've got the eyes looking right down the barrel, looking right at me, so it's a painting of truth. I grew up in Manhattan Beach, California, a little beach town south of Los Angeles. Football started for me at a very early age. I loved playing, I loved hitting. I was kind of small coming out of high school. I think I was only 175 pounds. I got a letter, it was from Yale. They offered me a spot coming in as a freshman. I asked around and people said, if you don't go, it's the stupidest thing you've ever done. So I went to Yale. I progressed at Yale. I was all Ivy and all that stuff. And one day I was studying for a final and my phone rang. Hello. They said, this is Gil Brandt from Dallas yeah. Cowboys who drafted you in the second round. And I went, that's pretty funny. Ha ha, bye. Jeff was one of those guys who felt like if he didn't give 110% every time that ball was snapped, he wouldn't be able to play in the NFL. We had a tough, tough linebacker. They valued toughness. Very tough to go against that Dallas flex defense. The flex was ridiculous. It took a couple years to learn it. So you had to be pretty smart. We knew that because he was from Yale, he was going to be smart. He was a good player, a guy that enjoyed playing the game, good and a great teammate. Jeff was one of our boys. Man, Jeff was cool. When I left Dallas, I moved to Venice Beach. Venice was a fun town, there was a lot of artists. Heather and I fell in love and, and got married. And then we had two little rugrats running around beating up on each other. Eventually got into film production. I've had three top 10 Super Bowl commercials that I've produced, and one of them was NFL Babies. We had Vince Lombardi and we had Dick Kent and some of the players and all that. It was super fun to work on. I had a fabulous straight life. I didn't really become aware of being gay until probably my 40s or 50s. Um, it was something that I had suppressed so hard for so many years that I had no, I really had no idea. My story was you kind of go on a track of being who you're supposed to be, um, not who you want to be. My mom worked at the high school where I went to high school. I was not gonna be gay at the high school. And in the 60s and 70s growing up, it wasn't cool to be gay. I mean, I wouldn't have known what to do about it anyway. And then I go to Yale. So that not quite fitting into the to the beach boy that gets to go to Yale story. And any feelings I had, I just put in a box and put them on a shelf. And then I get drafted by the Cowboys. And being a gay Dallas Cowboy was not going to happen in the 80s because I'm way too public of a figure. Heather and I had a great time for a long time. And then the whole gay thing started coming out. I offered to stay together and do things differently, stay together for the children, and then we tried to do it for a little while, but that didn't work out well. <laughs> we had a couple years of not really communicating. It was tough, and that, you know, those things are never great. It was my fault, you know, it was my fault for uh, becoming who I am, you know? It was, it was, it just kind of slowly happened, and, um, you know, the uh, divorce and everything, all that stuff's my fault. I like to paint people that interest me. Coach Lander is a man of few words. He would, he'd probably go, okay, Jeff, that's real nice. And that would be it. He'd walk away. You want it? No. This is my Pete Rozelle painting, and to me, he was always the face of the league. So I decided to paint him. <laughs> This is my painting of Jim Brown. If I had ever met this guy on the field, I think I would have turned tail and ran.
After Heather and I got divorced, you know, I was alone at some meeting in West Hollywood. The meeting ended at five or six or something like that. I said, hey, is there a bar around the corner or a restaurant? And I said, yeah, go to this place, Tortilla Republic, I think is the name of it. And Joshua was sitting close enough to where we eventually started talking. Jeff is a larger than life character and you know he just kind of wore me down by the end of the evening <laughs> so I gave him my number and you know I think a lot of people want that love at first sight story and that just wasn't the case for us you know Jeff wasn't living his authentic life then so how could I fall in love or really connect with someone who wasn't being themselves I wouldn't stay anywhere overnight I was still freaked out about my family I didn't want I wasn't comfortable bringing that part of my life into my life. We would not be here today if it wasn't for me pushing Jeff forward every step of the way. True. It was a really slow evolution, piece by piece, date by date. Josh pushed hard to meet the family, um, Heather and the kids, and I was freaked out about it. Jeffrey came to me and told me that he wanted to meet to meet someone. And I was like, yay, good. <laughs> we were fine with it before he was like, <laughs> what a big we, deal. Uh, it was kind of like, I mean, I guess it's kind of like, a sh it was a shocker at like first, but you had to like really take it with like an open heart. The wheels came off after that and it just started barreling forward. When the wedding invitations went out, Josh wanted to have a picture of us together on the thing. And I just said no, because I was still being weird about this. And I still had this thing in my brain that um, of all my friends and all my family and all my old teammates and everything, it was like, oh my God, am I like, am I going to let people down? My old football coaches and my dad were the last guys kind of that I had to tell. And my dad, we went through this whole conversation. I was bawling my eyes out, very emotional. She said, uh, how are people treated you? And I said, amazing. Um, and we went through this whole thing. And then he just said, what goes around comes around. You know, that's it. If you're a good person and uh, you're good to people, they'll be good to you. So if anything else, my friends love me more now. There's a couple that don't, but uh, I'm so thankful that everybody was kind to me. And um, it's a life lesson for sure. I've, I mean, my life's taken a lot of turns, and this was certainly a doozy, but um, I'm happy I did it. And my dad hit the nail on the head. What goes around comes around. If you're a good guy, everything will be fine. Our wedding day was definitely the best day of my life. And I don't think anybody that was there that day could deny our love and the relationship that we had if anybody questioned it before. Um, it was, they it they was, didn't question it after that day. It, it was magic. Jeff Rohr, former Cowboys linebacker, oh, yeah. he married Joshua Ross on Sunday in LA. And the reason this is unique is this is the first known NFL player to be in a same-sex marriage. I respect that, and congratulations. Congratulations. Okay, congratulations. Oh, Congrats. The attention that we've got um, as a family, and me especially as being uh, the first NFL player to be in a same-sex marriage, was totally unexpected. A football player that actually got married to same-sex was a big deal. And then finally, you know, the fact that we all live together. Heather, my husband, and my two kids. Same sex marriage. Two teenagers. Oh my god, what? It's just a metaphor. And then Jeff, you're looking at me. Heather, Jeff's ex-wife, lives in the back and lives in the guest house with us. We're all very busy. Ultimately, we're here because we have two children, and it's so much easier to have us all in the house together. I think I get along better with Jeffrey now than ever. We're kind of a modern family, you know? It's like it's an interesting setup, you got to admit. 
They say, if dad says no, ask mom. If mom says no, ask other dad. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Josh is more like uh, the evil uncle. <laughs> the evil uncle? What? The evil it's uncle. Not. No. I wouldn't subscribe it. Yeah. I'm the yeah. cool hot mom. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> no. I'm the hot mom. Okay. Yeah, you're the hot, hot mom. Uh, you're the okay. hot mom. Okay. I'm the hot stepdad. <laughs> I got to say to... Having a father like you, you know, it makes me proud. Thank honestly, you, buddy. Because it really shows a lot of courage in a man to be able wow. to do something like this. I love you, buddy. I love you, too. I've been wrong the whole time about me coming out. I don't think I was wrong in a bad way. It was just I didn't, I, 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 I gauged everything wrong. I was especially nervous about the football community, the NFL and the Cowboys. What I've learned is that they've both been very accepting. How are you, sir? You, good to Gil. see you. How you been? Really good to see you. How's Gil? I'll never forget. Shook that hand. The first you said, "Get the first, hell out of here, no, boy." No, the first damn time that I ever walked on the practice field, I shook that hand. Good to see you, man. Once you're a teammate, you're always a teammate. Okay, I don't care who you marry. That doesn't that doesn't take away the fact that you know you had that star on your helmet. My teammates want the best for everybody. If this is what makes you happy. That's what we want for you. I hope he's happy. I hope he has a great life. Once, like, Josh finally, like, kind of enabled Dad to, like, be happy and just, like, be the person that he is truly, then he was, like, a whole different person. He's a lot happier now. I'm so happy and so proud that I'm out, and I'm so proud that I'm gay. And uh, just going to go forward. You can be gay and you can have a family. You don't have to prescribe to anybody's life. You can make your own. And if you want, you know, to have a family and to have a home, you can have that being gay. That's what it's taught me, and I hope that other people will see that too. The World Pride Parade was a couple months ago in New York, and the NFL had a float, and they invited me to be on it. If I'm the first NFL player to get married to a man, then I better act like it means something because it does to the gay community and it does to a lot of people that were in my situation that, you know, that will someday come out. There'll be more, you know, it probably could be a while. We're all moving the ball forward. <laughs>